I really did consider the C5 Z06. I also very strongly considered a C6 Z06. That checked almost every box for me, and that was a very hard one to walk away from. So those were very high on my list. Very sharp handling, extremely fast, and honestly, between that and the Gen 3 Vipers, it is completely down to the driver of who is going to put down a faster time, both for acceleration and for track times. And honestly, with the traction control, with the driver's assist that you get in the Z06, I think you get a much more streetable experience, but I also think you can more consistently put down those times because you're less afraid to push the limit because there's some sort of a safety net to catch you. It's also more practical because it has that rear hatch and it literally gets twice the fuel economy of the Viper. Yes, the practicality in the fuel economy is very nice and I do complain about that on the Viper, but even when I had my Mustang, I only drove it on days that were sunny and clear weather and I put less than 3,000 miles on it in a typical year. When you only drive 3,000 miles a year, fuel economy is a lot less of a concern. Even even if you have a car that's half the fuel economy, you figure that's a couple hundred dollars a year, maybe in total fuel cost difference. And you also have to keep in mind that gas was about half the price when I was buying this car. So that was also a factor. And I'll touch more on this in a little bit, but the reason that I chose the Viper over the Z06 is that the Viper is just a lot more special and is something that you just go out and enjoy from time to time. Having that kind of specialness to it and knowing that it's so unique, there is an enjoyment factor in that. And I think that uniqueness, and I think having that experience of having something that's a little more exotic, there is a dollar sign that I'm willing to pay over what I would pay for a Z06 to have that more unique experience. And at that time, the Z06 prices were still pretty close to the low end Viper prices. So it wasn't a huge dollar difference between them. So it really came down to personal preference of driving experience at that point rather than the price point. But the Z06 did check a lot of boxes, looks great, has a lot of power for street use, and it is a track weapon. And it's also a very reliable car. I know people are gonna be like, oh, it drops valves, but I really don't think it's as common as people think, and it's a relatively easy fix with some preventative maintenance. So that was a very compelling argument. I had so much difficulty walking away from that. With the Z06, I kind of realized a lot of the things that I liked that had the high enough power that I really enjoyed it on the street, but also still had that good track reliability are typically high revving, naturally aspirated engines. So that did put the Shelby GT350 on the list. It also put the newer S550 Mustangs on the list. I also briefly considered a lower power car that was naturally aspirated that's just like a fun driver, like the ND Miatas. I really like the fastback looking ones. And I did consider the BRZs and a Lotus Elise as well. Now the Lotus, I actually test drove one. And even without my helmet with the hard top on, my head was scraping the ceiling the entire time. And it was so cramped that to shift, I had to like angle my leg awkwardly and lift it between the steering wheel and like the side door and it just barely fit because I'm not necessarily the smallest person. But at 6'2", that wasn't a car that I could reasonably see myself tracking because I didn't have the space to put a helmet on. And like I've said, I've got neck issues. So to have my helmet fit under the roof, I'd have to scrunch my head like this on the track and like lean forward while having these high G-forces. And that's just like a disaster and a migraine waiting to happen. Especially for a car that was at like the $35,000 price point where it's comparable to Viper prices it didn't make sense, once again, to buy something that I had to make a lot of sacrifices and kind of learn to live with it rather than just being able to go out and enjoy it and not having to deal with some of these unnecessary quirks when I could just buy a different vehicle. This also brings up another point. I'm not really a convertible guy. The Gen 3 Vipers were only made in a convertible until 2006, so I didn't really have a choice but to get a Viper in a convertible. So I kind of get the convertible thing now. I didn't really get it before I bought this car, so convertibles were also kind of off the list as well. Miata was a little bit lower on my list for that reason. And again, Miatas were a little bit newer at that time, especially for the NDs. I think I would have been interested in one if I could find it for like the high teens or low 20s, but most of them at that time were still in the 25 to $30,000 range. But again, I'm looking for both trackability and streetability in addition to it being fun. And for me, going from 400 horsepower to under 200 horsepower is too much of a step back. And I'm not quite ready to give up that level of acceleration quite yet. I ended up passing on the BRZs and the Miatas for that reason. The Shelby GT350, I love those. There was one dealership near me that had one. 